today is all about Halloween. And we did a lot of different activities in October leading up to Halloween, sort of as prep for <laughs> Halloween. Because even though Halloween has always gone relatively smoothly for us, I'm never quite sure how each year is going to go from year to year. And so I like to kind of get Maggie ready for it. And one of the ways I do that is by going to different activities. I brought my camera along. So first I'm going to give you a glimpse of the Halloween fun and then I'm going to talk a little bit about our Halloween strategy and what exactly it is that we do to get through the month of October and how we try to set the girls up for success leading up to Halloween. In the pool? Trick or treat. In the pool? Trick or treat. In the pool? Trick or treat. Mm -hmm. In the pool. Trick or treat. In the pool? In the pool. Trick or treat. Jump what? <laughs> the pool? Jump what? Were you going to say jack-o'-lantern again? You were telling me jack-o'-lantern earlier. share our 2018 Halloween experience with you and sort of how we make Halloween work for our daughters who are on the autism spectrum. One of the things that I like to do that I like to think has helped Maggie get better at Halloween is that we practice a lot and I don't mean like going to grandma and grandpa's house and going up to the door and trick-or-treating. What I actually do mean is that generally if you live in a non-rural area, we used to live in a rural area and we didn't have a lot of opportunities and actually we used to live in a rural area but now we live in a rural area next to a larger city, not a large city but next to a city and there are so many different opportunities for Halloween events leading up to Halloween. 
And so basically for the entire month of October, I just try to make sure, I try to pick and choose several different Halloween events. They aren't necessarily Halloween events that center around trick-or-treating, although that is definitely part of it just because it's Halloween. But I try to pick out a couple Halloween events each year that are especially going to give Maggie a chance to practice going out, being dressed up, being in crowds, being around all the loud noises. Maggie doesn't really, she's not really bothered by loud noises, but I think it's still good for her just to kind of be out there with all of the noise and all of the people and all of the costumes. It's not something that's really bothered her in the past, but at the same time, it's something that, I mean, it could be overwhelming for any kid. And so I think it's kind of good for us to get out there and just kind of practice it. And she always has enjoyed it. And so it's something that we do. So this year I chose an event at our zoo. And that one actually, <laughs> I chose the special autism day that they had, mostly because the one that is open to the public is so incredibly insane. And I knew that we were going to have some other really busy events that we were going to. So. For that one we did opt to the one, the autism one that wasn't going to have the super long lines for all of the events. We went to a Greek life trick or treating event that we go to every single year that is really really neat where all of the houses basically on Greek row have, in the, in the town nearest that has a university, have little trick or treating tables set up outside the houses and a lot of different student organizations also set up tables and they have games and we go down and so Sadie, Patch and James were very very into all of the games. Maggie wasn't, <laughs> Maggie was there for the candy. She was definitely there for the candy but she also, if I suggested her, that she play a game that was like a beanbag type toss game, you could definitely see that she's played a lot of those type games probably in like OT and various therapies because she would right away go over and kind of like do the beanbag toss really fast and then get her candy and, and go. We did that last night and then tonight we did actual trick-or-treating around our neighborhood. Our neighborhood did not have very many houses that were participating in trick-or-treating. There were a lot of houses that were super, super decorated. There were even a lot of houses that had signs up that said trick-or-treat, that had lights on. Not very many houses actually were handed out candy that were had people home. So that was interesting. <laughs> But we went around, we went to the few houses that actually were participating in doing trick-or-treating and Maggie got to practice saying trick-or-treating and it was fun and she loves it. She, I even let go of her hand for a little bit because our street is so quiet and that was pretty cool and she didn't take off, she didn't run. That whole, the fact that she was walking from house to house for candy was apparently a pretty strong anchor and so she stayed with us. And so that is sort of our Halloween strategy. I imagine it would be way more complicated if she was had more sensory issues that involved being in loud, crowded places, especially for the more crowded events that we go to that have tons of kids. But all in all, it went really, really well. If you liked this video, we'd love it if you hit that like button. And if you'd like to stick around and see more videos about all things autism related, we would love it if you would hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.